In this video, we will be drawing walls as though we are doing the wall design layout from scratch. The functionality that we will be using can be accessed from more than one place. For example, walls can be placed by either using the wall command from the ribbons, model, and tabs wall group, or, as in this case, by right mouse clicking to select the insert wall function from the contextual mouse menu. The wall properties dialog then appears. Let's select the exterior bearing wall, 350S 162-33, and we'll use the default values and click OK. Now we're ready to select our start point. Before we place our first point, notice the status bar located at the bottom of the vertex window. The status bar will show a prompt for using the function you've selected, the properties of the object, in this case the wall, and the coordinates of the cursor. Although not imperative, in this example I will be snapping the first point to the global origin, which is that green plus sign. Notice that as the cursor approaches that point, a snap marker appears, letting us know that we can now automatically snap to that point without having to be exactly on that point. So now I left click to select that point. Now I'm going to zoom in by rolling my mouse wheel and explain some additional features. Notice that the cursor has taken the exact shape of the wall that we're replacing. The arrow shows us the direction of the exterior side of the wall. Also notice that a wall input contextual menu has appeared that allows us to control our input process. I'll explain a few of those controls. This mirror toggle controls the location of the exterior side of the wall, as shown by the arrow on the wall cursor. For this current wall, we are using the exterior framing line for placement and measurement. For example, we can change that and use the interior framing line, center framing line, back to the exterior framing line. We can even select another wall from the library while we are still within our input process, but for now, I'll continue to use the same wall. I'll zoom back out by rolling my mouse wheel and continue to place the wall in the vertical direction. To do this, I would like to lock or constrain the cursor along the vertical axis. Cursor constraining can be done by a number of ways. You'll notice that as I rotate the free end of the wall, a bow tie shape appears at 45 degree increments. The appearance of the bow tie means that the next click constrains the cursor along that axis. I could also have chosen to right click and use the contextual mouse menu's Y axis constraint selection, or I could have typed in the I keyboard shortcut command. Some other shortcut key constraints are also shown here. The method you use is by your preference. So, continuing the wall layout with our wall constrained along the vertical axis, the next point will be located some distance from the previous point along the constrained direction. I can locate the next point of the wall by using the keyboard to type in a distance value. So for a distance of 24 feet, I type in 24 and single quote to represent the foot tick mark. Note that as soon as I began typing the value, a coordinate input dialog appeared, and for my constrained wall, the enter distance was automatically placed into the distance field. If the wall was not constrained, then separate X and Y values would be entered into this dialog. Click OK and the point is placed at 24 feet from the previous point. Now I want to go 40 feet to the right, so therefore I want to lock my cursor horizontally, and when I see the bow tie, I left click to lock the cursor in the horizontal direction. Now I type in the distance 40 feet, press Enter or the OK button to place the point. Now I want to go down in the vertical direction, so I look for the bow tie, left click to lock the cursor, 
and I want to align this wall with the first wall. To do that, I can use the cursor to snap to that point, and the vertically constrained wall will go down to that distance. And now I can just snap to the origin marker to close the loop. Note that the wall input function is still running, and we can continue to input more walls. First, I'll zoom closer to the building by left clicking the zoom window function from the drawing window's tool strip, and left click two points to define my zoom area. Now I want to place interior walls. I'm going to select an interior wall by using the wall's contextual menu, select another wall function, and from the library, left click the interior wall type, and I'll use the 350S 162-33 interior bearing wall, use the default values, and click OK to close the dialog. Note that the status bar properties have been updated to show my current wall selection, but the placement line is still set to be the exterior framing line. I want to use the middle line when placing the interior walls. So I will change the placement line by using the contextual menu to select the wall middle line. Note the updated status bar properties. I'm now ready to place the interior walls. So let's say my first interior wall needs to run all the way across the building and its center line is 10 feet up from the interior framing line of this exterior wall. That means that the first wall point will need to be measured from this corner. Let's zoom into that corner to see how that's done. To measure from this interior framing line corner, I move the cursor near the corner, and when I see the snappable symbol, I press the Q key. Pressing the Q key resets the relative origin to the location of the cursor at that time. Notice the coordinates in the status bar. We can now input the location of the point with respect to this new relative origin. I will press the I key to constrain the cursor in the vertical direction, then type in 10 feet, enter, constrain in the horizontal, zoom out with the mouse wheel, approach the destination wall, look for the snappable cursor symbol, then left click to connect to that wall. The F2 key toggles between the 2D and 3D windows, and as you can see, the walls that have been laid out in the 2D window have also been created in the 3D model window. I'll place a couple of more walls. Notice that the cursor can find these yellow snappable markers at center locations. So if I want to place the next wall exactly in the center of this interior wall, then when the cursor finds the center marker, left clicking will automatically snap to that location. Then I lock vertically and snap to the exterior wall. I'll place a couple of freestanding walls to show that when the last point of the wall doesn't end automatically, you can confirm ending by pressing the middle mouse button or by pressing V on the keyboard. This allows continued wall placement at another location. You can also select Confirm from the mouse menu. Pressing the Escape key ends the wall input function. Press Ctrl-S to save the project.